Sup. The opinions and views expressed in this podcast are that of our own and future bachelor only and not affiliated with any outside party or entity. This fun podcast may include some adult language. Future Bachelor Podcast. Oh. Whoa, welcome to Future Bachelor. My name is Cy. And I'm Veronica. And we talk about everything pop culture, dating, and bachelor. This episode, we are covering Super Bowl highlights, how Gorilla Glue should never go in your hair. I thought that was pretty obvious. <laughs> and thanking people for their feedback, a la Vibrator Girl Katie. Yeah, and this is episode 151. <laughs> Whew. Wow, that uh was what a what an intro. I I really had to start it off with that vibe because, um, I mean when DJ Mustard started putting out all these beats with all these rappers, like when I was a DJ, I would legit go on like an hour set, like back to back, like DJ Mustard's songs, all the beats he made for everyone. And this one, oh my goodness, it was just like when this it came out. This is a out, great song. And and T Pain hadn't come out with a song in a while actually too, so this was like you know like kind of like a comeback record for him. Um, and it, I actually haven't seen trying to think if there's been another one since this one that's been so big but yeah man that song's a bop up down by t-pain featuring b.o.b atlanta's own um so uh yeah v what's been going on that song was so spotify does these like little time capsule um uh playlists that update every every day it seems and that was actually on my time capsule playlist today today yeah yes that's crazy (laughs) um like i honestly i'm trying to think of where i heard it i hadn't heard it in a while so i was like we got to start the show off with that but v what's been going on what's been going on your last week how's everything well my last week i um had a little bit of a Happy hour, socially distanced happy hour with some of them, actually some of the girls that some of them used to work for the company with us, some of them uh, still work for the company with us that we used to see for game nights and stuff. So it was nice to catch up with those ladies. Um, And then I did, I played Among Us for the first time with my hometown friends we like hopped on a google hangout and then we all were playing it on our games and i will say i got to be the imposter a couple of times and i got to kill some people i was pretty good at it um i definitely it was so much fun like i was like wow i get why people love this game now like yeah, it's just I have like no a idea blast. what you're talking about yeah you've never heard of among us no, i've heard of among us i just don't know what it is like i just don't it's like pretty much so like to explain it it's almost like a hyped up version have you ever played the game mafia no i don't play games okay well the game mafia i know we did is game like, night and stuff but do you remember that how bad i was at like playing games with people and stuff i know I was well winning. yes i'm i'm great i love game nights and i love like competition but like for people who know people who know who know mafia is like a game that i feel like everyone played back like you know around bonfires or like at sleepovers and stuff and it was like you had to figure out like each person had different roles and like there would be a narrator who would like give them the roles and you had to figure out who was killing whoever and like the impasse like among us is pretty similar except as a video game and you're all like little crewmates on a ship and you do different tasks but if you're the imposter you're you're killing people and you can like sabotage different tasks and stuff so it, the whole point is that everybody else on the ship is trying to figure out who the imposter or imposters are so a lot wow. of fun wood wreck okay um i went to this brewery over on the west end of atlanta um for some some outdoor beers with my friend Katie called Best End. It was a lot of fun. We stayed there until it started to like sleet. It sleeted this past weekend in Atlanta. So then we headed out because we were like, are these hail, snow? What's happening? <laughs> um, and then we both hung out uh, and watched the Super Bowl at our friend Taylor Marie and Ray's. Yeah, uh, that was super fun. Uh, funny thing, it's like I barely watched the TV. I was just like having a good time with everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and plus, the game was kind of a little underwhelming, especially for the someone. The game was a little lopsided, which I was not enthused by. But but um, yeah, your boy Tom Brady. So um, Not my boy. He is not my boy. That uh, is for damn sure. Okay, I don't know. I just I just know that name. Um, so... That's what's up. Yeah, Super Bowl is cool. I did a couple things. I actually tried out the farmer's market down the street on sun- on Saturday morning. 
You know, oh, like when the you one s- at the Carter Center. Yeah, I um, you know, uh, went to bed pretty early on Friday. Woke up, me and Andy wow. walked to the farmers market. Yeah, um, I Damn. didn't. Yeah, I didn't really get anything, but um, Andy got a bunch of stuff. Like I don't know, I just like it's weird. Like the f- whole just buying like greens and stuff from there kind of just feels so weird. I don't know why, <laughs> but I'm gonna get used to it. I I I, I don't know why. Um, because I don't eat much of that stuff yet. Like you know. He's like so interested in like spices and like salsas and and like different types of like mustard greens and stuff. I'm just like, Ugh, what? I can't. And I'm not gonna walk around with this in my backpack and stuff. But anyways, um, <laughs> okay. But it was a cool walk, man. It was like they got hey, other yeah. stuff there I too. Yeah, I mean, and now you're exposing yourself to these kinds of things, and that's <laughs> that's step one. You know, that's step one. <laughs> yeah, dude. And also not needing to do it with just a girl. Like we're just two guys going to the farmers market. Yeah, you know what I'm just homies. Going to the fucking su- the yeah, farmers dude. market just together. Homies going to farmers market yeah, together too. Let's normalize farmers market with the bro, you know. So, um, <laughs> uh, I think uh, that was cool. And then also, I did a mix of uh, one of my beats over Usher's "Yeah," which I put out. So um, that was really fun. I, I just I don't know. I just like mixing like old songs with like new beats and stuff that I'd be making and everything. So gonna be doing a lot more of like producing and stuff on actually you know who's inspiring me is uh chloe uh Haley. oh your your Our, new celeb crush yeah dude she is so awesome like not only is she beautiful but like she makes like sick ass beats have you been seeing her beats yeah oh my god they're talented they're her and her Stop sister there both- i'm like i'm just talking about one i don't know what the other one is like i Hallie. okay good for her I don't know. I don't follow her yet, but I do follow follow Coley as for her own music. So um, that's pretty cool. And uh, I think at the end of this episode, as like a post credit scene, you guys can hear my yeah reboot beat. Yeah. So yeah. Um, the yeah. way I said yeah, like yeah. <laughs> Dude, thanks for your enthusiasm. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Anyways, yeah. V, you know I've been wondering since the beginning of the show. What are you watching? What are you well, been watching? All right. I watched Malcolm and Marie, which has Zendaya and Denzel Washington's son. I forget his full name. And it's like, you know, been lauded as like this big whatever. And it's by like the producer director is the same one who does Euphoria. So like obviously like Zendaya, Zendaya has like a close relationship with him, etc. So this movie, though, it wasn't it for me. I it was hearing it. I was hearing that it was like just like an hour and a half of just like people fighting and you're just like I don't even want this in my life. Why am I watching Yeah. People fight? It was honestly my roommate and I watched it and her boyfriend and we were all watching it and like Rachel and I were like wow, like this is just reminding me of like a toxic situation with like an ex. Like this isn't an entertaining like like I I they I felt like they were trying too hard to like do something and it was like all in black and white and you know it was just supposed to be over the course of a night and it just was it, I think the acting like Zendaya is an incredible actor. Like I think she just does an incredible job. Um and I think she did a great job in that and I think the acting was good. The music was pretty good too it's just the whole concept it dragged like we literally fast forwarded through the last five ten minutes because we were like okay is there any talking happening we were like trying to figure out what was gonna happen yeah no i first of all i don't i haven't seen too many things that she's in like except for like spider-man and uh that's pretty good i mean she does she doesn't talk much in it but like she's cool as like a new version of mj so that's dope uh and I hate when, but like when movies and directors like try too hard, like you know, trying to be all like, like artsy or something, you know. Yeah, like, and it definitely like it was like, it was supposed to be like you know a comment on race. It was sort of it was I feel like it was didn't know exactly what it was trying to do, and it just and not any part of it really came off strong enough to like carry that, but. Um, otherwise I've been watching framing of Britney Spears. I haven't finished it yet. I started it the other night and I fell asleep, but well, I you don't to want her to it. be free then. Huh? You don't want her to be free then if you didn't finish watching it. 
No, I mean, I still want her I'm to be joking. free. I watched. I, watched I still the whole... want her to be free. I... You could want her to be free within the first five minutes of watching it because you could just see how she's been used and abused by the system and by her father. And it's just, it's disgusting. And so why, why did it take this? Like, cause I watched the whole thing. Why did it take this show to make people start like realizing what's happening? What happened to her back then? And, and how like she was put under a light that like in today's standards would be just kind of like very gross and sickening, you know? Well, because her story's not, um, it's not the only one that's like that. I mean, the system like that kind of like in the industry and stuff like that has been doing like and we've all been we, a lot of us have been new. Like I've been new about this because like especially like the whole Justin Timberlake element of it. Because I thought like, that was interesting how they leaned into that element, too, which I think is fair enough because like um, because Janet Jackson's situation, too, was like another situation. Exactly. Where he, you know, exactly. kind of skated through and like the girl like kind of like had to reap, you know, whatever happened. So, um, yeah, no, it was pretty it was pretty eye opening, uh, just kind of crazy to see how uh, one can go from, you know, I don't know. It was just like it was just interesting to see how society was kind of like the crazy ones and how, you know, like even the idea of the paparazzi, like I know that's their job and stuff, mm. but like, do you guys know how crazy you guys are adding to like life by being like doing that type of stuff? There just has to be some stuff that we have to rethink. I mean, we are obviously in a 2020, yeah. 2021 uh, lens. It, it, all this looks kind of crazy. Like the, the news anchors asking her questions and all that different stuff. And, you know, like, um, it's kind of crazy, man. So watch it. Uh, I, I do wonder, though, like where her mind state is at these days, because she seemed like so grounded and like uh, well spoken in a lot of those interviews and handled a lot of that stuff really well. But like when you see her on like TikTok now, it's just like it doesn't even seem like the same person talking like no and i definitely think there's like some mental health and different things happening there that has not been taken i mean like i feel like if you get pushed kind of in the position that britney was i think with that and isn't checked by like you know doing different things like building up your mental health toolbox which she fully was not I, during those times, she had no ability to do that. I think there's definitely more things at play. And it's it's interesting that, like, this comes out now knowing that, like, the stuff with the case and everything is, like, still kind of in process. Like, they're, all of this stuff is still kind of, like, different wheels are turning. Yeah, and so. also, like, it's just hard to, like, I, I can't really jump on whatever train because, like, there, you said there's a lot of things in play because, I mean, the big part of, like, why she probably signed any type of conservative, it was, like, probably to see her kids. So it's, you know, honestly, what happens like if like if she does go free and she does and like for like, God forbid, something happens or like she ends up like killing herself somehow or like doing something crazy like, you know, and it's like well, you guys wanted her free for what? Just for, for her just to see her burn out. So there might be like things like, you know, she, there I, we just don't know everything. Um, but, yeah, it's interesting how a documentary like. It, I, I, this kind of reminds me of like when the R. Kelly stuff, it's like we've known about mm. like R. Kelly stuff for a while, but why did it take like this R. Kelly documentary to like expo expose him to like a wider audience, you know? Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I was watching too. I guess we might as well get into some, I don't know, quick hits. Yeah. What All right. Some quick Start hits? us off. Some quick Super Bowl highlights. As we said, Tom Brady and his team won. Whatever. I don't like Tom Brady. I will never like Tom Brady. Um, and that's fine. If you like Tom Brady, good for you. But I don't like him for a variety of reasons. Anyways, the halftime show was the weekend. And it was definitely an interesting halftime show. Um, very covid regulated all his dancers which works for the, his backup dancers for part of their whole like um bandage situation they did it was easy just to shove a mask with that um and it definitely because he's been carrying out this whole theme from his this album of the whole idea of like fame so we've seen him in the bandages and in whatever at the award shows we've seen him doing the like drastic uh 
um, plastic surgery, makeup, and whatever, and this was kind of supposed to be the curation of that journey and how he's explained it is like the evolution of like being in part of like the Hollywood system and what it does and like blah, blah, blah. And it, it was definitely interesting um, to see. And I think he did a good job playing a lot of songs from like his earlier stuff and his like more recent stuff. Yeah, um, but, I, I agree. Uh, I, I do think the highlight of this whole Super Bowl was the music aspect. I mean, People are going in on the weekend. I could have seen worse, but I think the weirdest part about seeing the weekend is the fact that you don't really see the weekend that much. I think this is an yep. issue with with mega stars kind of like going like kind of ghost for a long time and then trying to be like you're this huge public star. Like we kind of want it. We're in an age now where we want to know you a little bit more. Like I have no idea who the weekend is. Yeah, who is able? Yeah, I don't know. You know, and um. I mean, the songs were really good, though. I was vibing. Me and Ray were, like, dancing and doing all the choreography in the back. We were cracking up. It was so funny. But, um, was good. But, yeah. And then, you know, the way they brought it out, they had, like, her and Jasmine Sullivan and Eric Church all doing, like, music, which it sounded amazing. Yeah. yeah. I personally would have liked Jasmine Sullivan to be able to do the national anthem by herself. Um, but that would make, you know, the NFL have to really take uh, – take account of their racism and I don't know if they're ready to do that yet because they act like they are because they're giving like 250 million to anti-racist causes but uh yet Colin Kaepernick still isn't employed we so didn't see any, I don't know we didn't see any um special guests during the weekend set like I thought we like we usually no. get with other people maybe sometimes um I think he would have benefited from some kind of crazy like I agree because I feel like I feel like I love listening to the weekend's music and I think he's a very talented musician but I've never been one to be all like can't wait to see this live performance of the weekend like I just don't know if he like holds he grabs so much inspiration from like Prince Michael Jackson, et cetera, like for how he makes his music. But like, I don't think he carries the same stage presence as them. So it's, Dude, it's if you just, brought out it's Daft Punk, that would have been awesome. That would have been dope. I would think that would have been, and that would have like really made sense with like the whole vibe that he had going with like the set and everything. I think it would have been a and perfect And they're already position. wearing masks. Yeah, exactly. COVID <laughs> friendly. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I definitely think, uh, it was interesting. Uh, we're huge fans of Jasmine Sullivan here. She killed it. It's just cr it's just crazy to see that you can go so f like to Super Bowl so fast. Um, I know she's been doing it for a while, but we just like I just started like but listening. But she just to started last to year. pop off. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's what's up. Um, any Super Bowl commercial stand out? Like I know you like that one Amazon one, but let's not talk about that again. I, I mean, I didn't yeah, see I anything. obviously loved the Amazon Alexa one with Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. Uh, um. But I loved the Drake and Jake from State Farm. Honestly, I didn't see that. One. What was that? Like they were. It was like the State Farm, and it was like they. It was had Jake from State Farm, and they're like, oh, it was like a weird like stand-in situation, and the stand-in was Drake, and it was it was hilarious. But, um, I mean, just getting Drake. I felt like in general, though, the commercials didn't really grab me like they usually do. No one's going like to spend money on the Super Bowl for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, usually you see, like, movies coming out and stuff. Like, I guess we saw a couple, right? Yeah. They had some, like, Avengers. Um, What was it? Which Avengers one was it? Um, Falcon Winter Soldier. Yeah. So, so. – that's what's up. Well, enough yeah. of Super Bowl. That shit was kind of boring. And then, uh, but the party was fun. Uh, what else we got? So, speaking of football, mm. Aaron Rodgers sort of surprised us in a in his interview for um, for getting MVP. And he surprised people by saying, you know, 2020 has been a big year for me, blah, 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 blah. Got, like, got engaged. So he recently got engaged to Shailene Woodley. I didn't even realize he stopped dating Danica Patrick back in, I guess, back in July. So now he's dating slash engaged to Shailene Woodley, which seems like such a she? weird combo. Shailene Woodley was the star of The Secret Life of the American Teenager. And then she's been in a couple of like, um, what else has she been in? I think... 
One. Oh, she's like, in that like that was like the Hunger Games like like in space. Divergent. Yeah. Yes. Oh man, I hate her. Yeah, I, I don't hate love her. her, dude. She's the worst. Like, I I swear, like they she, tried to yeah, make. She kind of like came out on the scene. Like, they as tried she got... to make her a thing, and like no yeah. one was was good, like about it. Like, nah, dude. She's no, because like she didn't have like she kind of like came out on the scene. Like they were trying to make her like kind of like the next J La, but like her personality is so different from J La. She's all like, I'm a minimalist, and like I eat clay and like random shit like that. Nah, and nah. now you could even tell like she was rubbing off on Aaron Rodgers because like part of like his speech and stuff is all about like his mindfulness and meditation and I'm like Aaron Rodgers what so definitely a weird pairing we'll see how that works out for them uh, what uh, else we got um, so we brought this up back in the summer after when the BLM mu- movements were all happening and there was a bunch of like you know reckonings with brands of like renaming and and Jemima was one of them because of, you know, the typical like black mammy figure on the Aunt Jemima bottles. So they have renamed their um, products to the Pearl Milling Company, like flour milling. Um, though, you know, the Internet can never be happy. The Internet's been like, this sounds like a gravel mining company. This sounds like a James Bond villain, like whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> people can never be happy, but that's the new name. So that's what we got. Boo. All right. Well, I mean, what does it mean? It's a, like it's a comp like milling a milling company mills flour. It's like what produces like flour and stuff, which so makes still sense. Gonna like, make like syrup or they make syrup still, but they also have, uh, you know, pancake mixes and stuff like that. Fun. Um, what else we got? So today, the day that we are recording this, February 10th, Mm -hmm. is the 10th anniversary of Rebecca Black's major pop hit, um, Friday. Friday, Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Friday. All right. Um, Well, I mean, we love that song. I love Rebecca Black because she kind of like rebranded herself like look wise. I feel like she don't look like the same. She just grew up. She yeah, she was 13 when that came out and now she's 23. Yeah, so, yeah. but like, you know, some people could go down like, you know, kind of just as like a viral thing or whatever. Like she's kind of still like in the public eye, you know? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, she's up there on the TikToks. She... um has released a couple of new songs recently. I think last week she released a song or two weeks ago, a song called Girlfriend, because she identifies as being, um, you know, genderqueer and things like that. So, uh, but she released a Friday remix song t- today, and it was produced by Dylan Brady, um, and it features vocals from Big Frida. Uh, 303 and Dorian Electra. So it definitely has some some nostalgia, but also some like kind of like names to make it a little bit more relevant to today. That's what's up. I gotta check it out. I think I swiped through past her like video or something today, so I gotta see that. I just I don't know. I I was a big fan of 303. I love 303. So I gotta hear what that big fan. Like. Um, anything go viral this this past week? Oh man. So first of all. Um, uh, if you haven't seen this, seen the video or whatever, there's this woman, 40 year old Tesca Brown of Louisiana, who went onto social media to reveal that her hair is, it's stuck. It's been stuck in a ponytail for a month now because she ran out of her, her got to be like glued blasting freeze hairspray. And she instead grabbed Gorilla glue, glue, like spray adhesive, and put it onto her hair. And I think we all know Gorilla Glue is not meant to be on the human body in any sort of way. Um, and so now her hair is like helmeted to her head. And because of like how the glue works, when she's tried to wash it and everything, it actually kind of like makes the bond stronger. So like she's been like pretty much like adhering it more and more yeah, to her that's head. Like, that's like dreading essentially. But worse. Yeah, but worse. Product. Yeah. Dreading with Yeah, because it's just glue. like <laughs> Onto her head. She had to go to like LA to try to get some procedures to try to like get it 
out of her hair and try to like salvage her hair to some degree. Um, but I think at this point they had to cut off her ponytail completely because that was like the area that they were able to like cut off. And I think they're trying to use some sort of solutions to get like the rest of her hair that is like glued to her scalp, like unglued. But, you know, Gorilla Glue had to like post a tweet and stuff being like, didn't think we had to say this, but don't use our products like in your hair um, and stuff like that. And it's it's ridiculous. But some people think that she might have miss you know, misplaced what she thought was Gorilla Glue for a different product. Um, that's a styling gel is called Mocha de Gorilla or Gorilla Snot. And so p- some people are like, maybe that's where she got confused. No, but they don't, you don't keep those two things in the same spot. You know, where yeah, you keep Gorilla I glue. don't. You keep I it in just that junk drawer. Not next to your hair products. No, it's, that's just. Stupid. Yeah. Well, luckily someone's saving her ass. So um, what else we got? <laughs> So in a funnier video, um, there was a, you know, in these times, Zoom is is everywhere. I mean, we're doing this podcast over a video chatting platform. Mm. But one of the main things is there's been a lot of like virtual court appearances or things along those lines. Well, there was one in Southwest Texas where a attorney, Rod Ponton, arrived into the court look with a filter on as a kitten and no offense to like our yeah the great great sound effect no offense to our gen x or boomer i love pals. that you're, you're you're finding content for us to use that sound effect for. <laughs> yeah, i know we really i i do it for the sound effects but <laughs> but oh, yeah um no offense to our older pals but um they were struggling he was struggling to get this this off i have to i have to give it to like the judge and the other attorney and stuff on the trial with him for keeping it down because i know i would be dying laughing like i don't think i could have like made it through being all like yes yeah we see we see that you have the cat have you tried your video settings and like whatever because these days like you feel like people are just like really fucking with you or something like you're just like i'm not gonna fall for this like, I mean, we were on a meeting today, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just shit just can get awkward or something like that, like, in a second. But someone throws on a cat filter trying to be serious and shit. That's hilarious. I know, but he didn't even mean to. And he He's was like, all I like, I got my I swear assistant over here trying. I'm, I assure you, I am here. I am not a cat. So, I am not a cat, which honestly, like, that's just like the desperation in his voice. It's just. If you need something to brighten your day, it's it's a good video. So go check that out. All right. Well, what made you go yikes this week, V? Oh, boy. Well, Army Hammer continues the saga of, you know, of shadiness. So there's been some rumors floating around that he might have something to do with these uh there's this california's wonder valley there was like some dead bodies of women found near a site that he had been working on he had been doing some construction and stuff over the summer he like was with a friend he like stopped working went and like helped like renovate a hotel with one of his friends i don't know rich people shit i I don't get it but and also shady because who's to say Um, And then there is, you know, these bodies found. People thought it was like tied into things that have been coming up about Army Hammer. Supposedly, the county sheriff office is saying that they're not even investigating him and that he's not involved. But it's just a little shady that over the weekend when some of this news was coming out, both his publicist and his agent dropped him. Someone like Army Hammer, as rich and powerful and whatever, doesn't just get dropped by like his like agents and stuff unless they really think also, like I don't think he, he dro- he just drops everything to go help a friend build something like I don't I don't know like that sounds weirder to me than anything um I think we should start a whole nother podcast just talking about that because just about army hammer are you serious like, someone's gonna to- do it and it's gonna be the best podcast ever we should just we gotta do that. I mean I mean, like, the thing he was is, is though, to be like a you, bunch of different roles, and like Josh Duhamel is taking his nah, roles. Dude, like, you know what about starting those podcasts though? That scares me. Like, like up and vanish and shit. I'm like, like I guess if someone tries to kill you or whatever, people like got to us then. I know, but if someone tries to kill you, apparently that just makes them look even worse. It's like, oh yeah, of course he's dead. You killed him. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was coming after you and stuff. But 
I don't know. That's like really sketchy ass shit. Because Army Hammer, like, I wouldn't want him to eat me or anything like that. So you know, bear I me know. under if a you, hotel. If if you guys go to our Instagram post from a couple of days ago, me and one of my friends were trying to do an F Mary Kill with Army, uh, one of the next yikes moment See, member. You guys are sick. That's just Marilyn sick. Manson, and then last week's yikes member Morgan Wallen. And honestly, it's a really tough call because like. Army's like, if you fuck him, he's going to kill you. Marilyn Manson, as we're about to find out, he's also had several allegations of abuse and like tying people up, beating them, like past partners such as Evan Rachel Wood um, and also Atrix Esme Bianco. So it's it's really there's no winning. It's like the worst game of uh, F, F. Mary Kelly you could ever play. But, um, but yeah, Marilyn Manson, Evan Rachel Wood tweeted um, or went to Instagram this past week to expose, you know, her relationship when she had a relationship with Marilyn Manson back when she was 18 and he was 36 and they were also briefly engaged. Um, and, you know, she was saying different things about uh, abusing him of different, I mean, again, alleging him of different abuse and so has actress Esme Bianco and I mean he pretty much came out to say he's like as we know my art is controversial and sometimes people weave that into my personal like the what they think of my personal life blah 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 that was pretty much his response to Evan Rachel Wood's claims so who's to say but also his it looks like his agent and label might have dropped him. So, um, I don't know. It was quite the week of sort of cancellation, sort of droppings when it comes to comes to these these men, these men out here. Yeah, I mean, I guess I got nothing to say about that stuff. But I mean, that's what happens when you get like too kinky. You know what I'm saying? Like, just keep it missionary or something. Like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like dark paths these guys are just dropping down like i don't understand what's wrong with these just men you know it, just keep it missionary i'm just joking I'm dead. that's not gonna get me any women but um anyways oh my god why don't we just switch up and talk about the bachelor like what we're actually here to talk about you know what i'm saying let's things got it. weird things got weird but oh let's where do we god. start with all this stuff v all right, so we start where we left off. Mm. And where we left off last week was on the edge of our seats with a two-on-one pre-row ceremony situation with MJ and Jasenia. And they were having it out. Jasenia was winning. MJ just kept saying stuff about, you know, she leads by example. She had absolutely no argument. Matt came in. MJ was legit. Looked like she was. She came out of like, like the old nine hundred two Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero. Like her outfit, oh, yeah. her hair, the like, whole look. Yeah, yeah. It was a look. I liked it. But um, yeah, she was just like bare, like digging herself a deeper hole. Just like, just stop. Like you know, you're getting I so know. defensive. She's... It's a bad look. Like you know, and loud. Well, it's just like yeah, she wasn't. She had. And just saying, always just like... had something better to say. It's just like damn. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're losing. Like, and, yeah, MJ just didn't didn't do it, and so pretty much Matt is Matt made the right choice, sent MJ home, which it would have been crazy if he didn't. But you know, then he pretty much was like, I can't deal with this. This was too much drama. We're gonna forego the rest of the cocktail hour, straight to the row ceremony, and the one that I'm most upset that went home was Maggie because she's beautiful, but she honestly is too good for Matt. So it makes sense. But then Ryan completely lost it. Like after after she was last week kind of like the bad bitch being all like, yeah, these girls try to come at me and call me a hoe. And I said, fuck them. She this week is losing her mind and gets, and I mean, she just like breaks down pretty much for most of the rose ceremony and she ends up getting sent home. So... Yeah, I mean, it's uh, never a good look when you freak out like that. But um, the one I was disappointed in going home was, um, what's her name? The one that would just kind of had the girls talking shit about her until this episode. Like, all those girls went home, and then they were talking shit about her, the mean girls, and then about her being an escort and shit. Oh, Brittany. Yeah, Brittany. Yes. Yeah, she kind of unceremoniously 
left the show after all that drama. So I know, which I, it, it also sucks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, seems like she was there for so so quick and whatever. Yeah. So then the next thing that happens is this like mini c- confrontation or whatever between uh, Serena C and Katie because Serena C gets a bug up her butt after they don't get the cocktail part of the rose ceremony and for some reason decides to pin it all on Katie. Is there another Serena? Saying, there's two Serena. Serena C is the um, is the Asian girl, uh-huh. and then Serena P is the one that said the whole like, "Well, imagine if your first kiss was on a hot air balloon." Oh, I love her. She's yeah. <laughs> so freaking cute. Oh my gosh. Um. Anyways, yeah. So Serena C. Serena C pretty much decides that she's like, this is all Katie's fault because Katie's an antagonist. I do see where she's coming from, though. But this is another example of like uh, like another person just like like spiraling, you know, and just trying to look for blame on someone else. It's like she should. I'm surprised she's still there. Like just like Victoria was. I'm surprised she's still there either. Yeah. So it's like, like, dude, I think she's. Just do your thing. Obviously, you're there for a reason. He likes you for whatever reason. Like, you or know? the producers are keeping you there because you start this drama. Well, maybe, but I mean, yeah, I guess that's that's probably what's happening here. But regardless, a uh, homegirl was really kind of putting uh, asserting herself in a lot of different situations. Like she was standing up for stuff and, and everything, but like, yeah, you know, you are kind of like. You know, are you going to keep doing this? Like, you know, just keep I get telling it, people. But I mean, I didn't like how Serena C came at her saying that she wasn't there for the right reasons. Essentially, I, feel I think like- they're just more of like, yo, th- like they're treating her like she's a snitch. Like, you know, it's like, dude, yeah, stop but being she like was like, snitch. you're not here for the right reasons. And you came in here with your sex positivity, which that got me angry because I'm like, oh, like we're going to talk about sex positivity like it's a bad thing. You're going to like come at this girl for like actually being like a genuine, normal human being and like saying all this stuff. I don't know. Did not rub me the right way. Um, Anyways, but- like they get in a real big fight, get real loud. Um, this was not the most impressive back and forth, but I guess um, homegirl no. held it down. Um, but she what gets end up picked for a one on one. She does, but before her one on one is Piper's one on one, which Piper is super cute, and they do their one on one was pretty. Run of the mill. That's like, what I was saying. I was legit like, yeah. I mean, they made it look like it was. Such I didn't a even great... do any tipsy talks during it, really, yeah, they, because they there was nothing like to pop out. It was such a great out. time, but there was nothing that happened. And honestly, I feel like I don't know. Matt's kind of just like uses her to like just to make out with like on the low, like you know. Yeah, low key. Yeah, because he made out with her during the um the barn date too, in I mean, front she's, of them. She's cute. I mean, she's really cute, and I think they look cute together. And like, she had like her emotional moment I during their dinner. I didn't see it. I didn't see. I don't see it either. She had their emotional moment during their dinner, just pretty much along the lines of her like, you know, working on like emotionally opening up to people and whatever. Which to me is just like, there's nothing there. Whatever. But, she gets a rose. Let's talk about this group date. Yes, they went bowling, bowling. which I think is like the funniest activity for them to do. During a pandemic when, like, normal people are, like, putting your fingers in the same holes. But it, wasn't that, like, one of the first things that was supposed to open up around here in Atlanta? Like- yeah, here in Atlanta because, yeah, our governor doesn't give a shit. But. <laughs> <laughs> love bowling. Um, I'm terrible at it. But uh, anyways, yeah, bowling. no, the date was funny. It seemed like the girls all, like, for one moment, like, were just enjoying the day. and They were just having a good time. But they, and then you Chris know Harrison that they has- have- like, let's th- make it a competition. Yeah, they have to throw in, you know, something to make them all like somebody to just like get in their head like, about things. Lose it. Yeah. So what happened here? So they, you know, they went against each other's blue team versus pink team. Um, the the pink team manages to win, so then that means they got to have like you know the actual extended personal time with with Matt. Um, and you know, so the rest of them go back and are kind of sad See, this about was it the, then- this is the dumb part of the show like like i feel like the show has to try to throw in something dumb once an episode like yeah because- dude like what what's the point of even like telling these girls this you're just like pissing off they half the girls back just for them to walk back in you, because you, they're like you, actually you i feel piss, bad you, you, like it just gives the opportunity to piss off 
both girls for different reasons. Piss off the one girls for losing, and then they get all excited and come back and piss off the other girls for winning. Like, it's like, it's so fucked yeah. up. And he's like, yo, like, even the girls are like, sneaky, sneaky. Like, that's like one of the first times I've ever heard anybody say something like that on the show because i mean shit is sneaky but like straight up that's like the most blunt sneakiness i've ever seen it's just like yeah, you're straight up like you're you're playing them for fools yeah it's like what was the point of it you're legit playing then, with their emotions like it's not even like cute like it's not cute i think it's it's dumb and like you know it kind of had a like and it was sort of like them trying to be funny about the fact that they've had girls like you know who weren't on the rest of the date or whatever like crash group dates and stuff like that and like you could tell none of them found that funny they're like <laughs> yeah we're allowed to be here <laughs> and they're all like <laughs> like it just it just seems dumb but uh then there was the one-on-one -on -one with our girl katie and before that our man tyler c came on the scene to give his homeboy a pep talk, play some pool, do man things. And then, um, but the date consisted of Katie working with Matt to prank uh, Tyler with the massage therapist or, you know, actor playing a massage therapist uh, to, you know, to give him a prank for his quick stay at the Nima Collin, which I have to be honest the prank was entertaining, but it is problematic. Yeah, because... I mean, the first thing I said, I'm like, imagine this on The Bachelorette. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, twist her nipples. Yeah. That should but be that, the name I of this. I literally was screaming. I was like, what are we doing here? Like, we, this is like, it's like fully like, because that's fully a situation that could be happening if like you're at a massage, like, place and like someone starts doing st doing stuff to you without your consent like this is like not really a funny joke but um definitely definitely shady um and you know then they come in and surprise tyler and whatever and he's chill about it because he got his airtime which then helps him promote his book that he has out and i mean he was hot so i was happy to see him on my screen but Think it. Oh, I mean, I was dying though when like Matt got in there with the oil and shit because the way he squeezed it into his hand, it just went everywhere, and he was like in his shoulders and shit. I was just like, ah, my god! <laughs> like, I bet you. Were I know. Too. I feel like my shoulders went up to my ears. <laughs> just watch as I kept watching this date. I was like, stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, anyways, so he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is awesome. They go out on their thing. She just like, yeah, this is beautiful. Oh, like it was just like a very. Like the whole thing felt awkward, anyways. Like you, you, like yeah. you talk to him about such serious stuff, and then you're gonna try to like, like try to like put that past to you the next day. But regardless, at dinner they talk. She's like so into it, and I could just tell like he just wasn't. I know, you know. But the best of part is like I can't believe they legit make them like dangle the carrot rose. He and picked up the fucking rose like he was gonna give it to her. <laughs> Why even put Rude. it back? Like you look like an idiot putting it back. Like yeah. And I hate, like, how many, like, can I walk you out? It's, like, the douchiest it, thing to say. Like, I've never I, heard it feel, it never felt so douchey in my life. He said it, like, twice like, in this episode. Don't walk me out and don't touch, like, the whole, like, when he walks him out and he, like, puts his hand on their waist and shit. I'm like, don't fucking touch me. You're sending me home. Like, I don't want to be touched by you. I want to just walk myself out. Goodbye. Like, see you when I want to be you, my dude. All right, let me but, ask you this. Would you rather him... Be like get to a situation where he has to say like, "Can I walk you out?" Or would you rather him like set you up and like you think you're having a great time and you're already like outside in the front and as like he's like, you know, I just don't think this is gonna work. Like the car pulls up and you just have to like get in and go. What would you rather? Probably just get into the car. But I'm he like, still here. fooled you into being outside. I mean, yeah, in the neither front situation driveway. is good because you're still fooled either way because he's like either dangling the rose in front of your face. <laughs> he he still does a rose thing. It's just good. in the driveway. Huh? He still does the rose thing, but it's still it's just in the driveway now. So it's it's the same situation then, Sai. How is one better than the other? Neither you're one just is closer better. closer to the car and he doesn't have to already walk you out. That's what I'm asking. But he tricked then, you yeah, to I be outside already. I take the car then because then I can just be like, <laughs> hop right in, close the door in his face, and do a quick bird and say, adios. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh man. Anyway, so she, um, you know, it's it's funny though. Like she, I I called it early on though that that she was. I didn't like, think she was going to be the one. Yeah, we both didn't. No, think no, she was no. But I called it early on that she was bachelorette material. Faux show, sure. yeah. Um, because they gave her a really long edit on her on her exit, and and that was a sign. But I said this like a couple episodes ago. Like yeah. she was already showing signs of like, you know, yeah, like we were both fan saying favoritism like, we were and stuff. Impressed by her. Yeah. Also, I think like she just would make for an entertaining season. She's the one that showed up with a dildo, like or vibrator or whatever. Um. Anyway, so what has what happens for the rest of this episode? Well, uh, intertwined into all of these dates is Heather coming coming onto the scene, which is the most stage situation ever she pulls up to Heather, the security what are you doing here what you're gonna you mess up here? everything <laughs> she pulls up in this white minivan and she's all like i know like hannah just got off the like hannah told me how great matt was and i just had to come like and she's like and i know you guys are halfway through this only somebody that has been prompted by producers would know that they're halfway through. How else would she know that they're halfway through? Like, there's just no way. She's like, you know that you guys are halfway through this, but I have to meet him. And, like, Chris is like, oh, well, I guess I'll run it up the Why do they have to give her a minivan, though? It's just rude, honestly. I don't know. Like, it's already desperate. And then they're like, <laughs> we'll have to run it up the hill and figure it out with the quarantine and everything, which... As we could probably tell by how this was edited and everything, she probably had already been quarantining when she does the little, like, security gate thing. Because then they show the little, like, you know, her little footage from her losing her mind in her hotel room. And then she shows up at the rose ceremony at the end of this episode. So with the way that this episode shows it, that would have been, like, only a couple of days later. But... In general, I think, you know, I think, think she's Matt either already stay? quarantined. Do you think Matt lets her stay? Huh? Do you think Matt lets her stay? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I think so. And it's going to piss the girls off. They're already like ready to throw hands because she cut off Piper's time when they were like in the, the but Piper already cocktail. has a rose. I know, but she was ready to fucking throw some hands. And it, the previous but these girls next never are- learned from like the last day. Like, dude, just chill the hell out. It's just one more girl. Like, no one know, ever learns I know. her Kit lesson. Kit is like already out here calling her a bitch. I'm I know. Like, okay, let's, let's I know, simmer, dude. Bitch. Like, I was like, did you not learn anything from the last day? Like, I don't understand these girls. Like, like the whole point. Like, the whole point is that like you know Matt's doing. So and like they're like, bitch, what are you doing here? Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> you're a bitch. Like I was like, holy shit, dude. Like you're gonna be the next one to send. The, like it's not even a new like episode. Remaining- it's not even a new episode. He just sent home a girl for being mean. Like not even for. Yeah, Kit is like the remaining mean girl. I would say so. Like who is sh- Kit? I would say Kit is because Kit was kind of in on a lot of the shit with Victoria, MJ whatever and anna and so i oh, feel but like kit already kit is thinks the she's last better than girl. everyone so that's just- oh kid yeah kit fully thinks she's like well here i am in my mom's dress cynthia raleigh a ridge um fuck you guys i'm 21 and i drive a gold bentley like i don't know like she has bad energy she i hope she goes home next but yeah i don't know the whole the whole heather thing and like so now i'm a little confused on if her and matt have ever met before because she acts like she's she's all like it's so great to meet you and he's all like oh my god and i'm like no these bitches have uh, they have fully met before like there's no way that they haven't like it seems a little shifty that they haven't like either not even that if they hadn't even met but like um they've definitely talked do you think like even like just in the dms maybe i mean he knows of her like you know what i'm saying like she's he, they're probably in the same circle because of Hannah B and stuff. So I don't know. I, I just think like it's just one of those situations where probably she wasn't that interested in him until he became the bachelor. Oh, yeah. So um, you know how that goes. What do you we know got? how that goes. What do we got for <laughs> next week? Yeah, that's how I'm going to feel like I can't wait till I'm the bachelor and everyone's just like, hey, Cy. It's like <laughs> now I'm the bachelor. Um, But anyways, um. What do we got next, for next week? 
Next week, it looks like it's going to be a bunch of people are saying stuff's about to get rageful, which isn't a word. Um, it looks like a bunch of girls are just going to bully Heather and then she's going to go to Matt about how they're bullying her. And then Matt's going to be like, why do these bitches keep bullying each other? And it's like, because yeah, I think that's going to be where Matt says something like, look, Heather, like, I think you're really great. And if there was a another time, you know, I just can't. These girls, I've, I've already established like relationships with all these girls, which would be like a damn shame. Like if she had actually quarantined for two weeks, like for this and stuff. Um, yeah. But I mean, early on, I had heard something that she goes home pretty early on, like when she gets on. I thought she came earlier in the show, but. Um, yeah, because like we're halfway through because they keep like teasing during this this episode of this week. They kept teasing like they're like, you know, hometowns are only a few weeks away. So I think still, that's like, 10 girls, right? Yeah, there's yeah, there's Man, yeah. there's like 10 great girls, though. Like there's there's like some like I mean, not all of them are great, I guess. But like there's still some great <laughs> girls like that one team that lost in bowling. Like there was like six of like the best they girls were stacked, on one team. Yeah. Yeah, I was just like, and I I got why he sent them a note, being like, I just can't stop thinking about y'all. You gotta come over. Um, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> he's like, any- you up though? <laughs> yeah, right. So V, um, any other bachelor drama or? No. Nope. That's it for us. Yeah, because yeah, besides that, it was just the rumors around Katie potentially being the next bachelorette, which, as you know, as us. As a as a podcast, we tend to try to avoid those kind of spoilers. So, I mean, we don't know if that's true or not. And I mean, even been- if we did like no spoilers or whatever, like, would they be filming Bachelorette right now? Uh, no. Th- well, mm, probably soon. I think they just. I think recently they booked. Um, I feel like they a would resort- have to film it while the other ones like. Yeah, I think they would start filming it soon-ish. I mean, either now or soon. I mean, because think know. about it. Like, filmed, I just feel like they pick like last. They filmed this back in like November. I just don't think they can afford to mess up again. Like, like right now. Like, this is not the yeah. year to be trying out like Claire's, you know, or no, Ari's and stuff not. like that. You know, this is not the Ari Claire years. Like, yeah, no, let's, fuck let's, that. Let's get someone fresh and new. Um, all right. Well, why don't we get into our slapper of the week? Um, let's do it. So this I'm one, excited for it. Yeah, this one actually um, I'm, I'm going I don't have like a lot to say about it except for the fact that um, I yesterday one of my favorites Charlie Puth um, put out a story and he's like the drums on this are crazy. So usually when he does that I'll go and like or artists that I like I'll go and like add the song on Spotify and so I got a chance to listen to it and it's actually um, I, I try to research the artist. The artist is, is um, it's yeah, called I've Bad never Milk. Heard of them. And Bad Milk is, I don't, I think it's, it's actually just a girl. Her name is uh, Manuelita Garcia, AKA Bad Milk. Mm. She's a singer songwriter from Medellin, Colombia. Viva Colombia. Um, and, oh, hey. and she, and she's <laughs> quoted for saying, I'm Bad Milk, drink it. So I, there's not much Ooh. about this artist right here. So this is actually yeah. a song in Spanish. Okay. And um, I didn't I didn't even know that, you know, uh, she was Colombian like me. So uh, this is our slapper of the week. Ego by Bad Milk. Um, If you don't if you speak Spanish, you'll understand it if you don't. But it's just an awesome ass song. So I love. Yeah, I mean, I don't I can't get all Spanish words, but I love Latin music. So the the song is just good. Yeah. So without further ado, slapper of the week. Ego by Bad Milk. Let's go. Yeah, slapper of the week, ego by Bad Milk. I think that's a vibe. So that might be my weekend. Totally a vibe. I'm into it. Yeah. Um, I might be jamming that one for the next couple days into the weekend. But um, V, what do you got for some shout outs? Well, first, I wanted to shout out um my pal Rosevic. She just did a little sandbox session that is live, I think, on YouTube and Instagram um, of some of her music and stuff. So it was really cool to see her doing that. Um, shout out to Rosevic. I, I uh, honestly remember that time she like yeah did that Sunday morning cover that Maroon yeah. Five. She blew me away. I am a big fan of her music. She has a beautiful voice, and I love. She's very that talented. Can yes. Play some guitar. So, um, all right. Well, who else we got? I wanted to shout out my mama because she sent us a Valentine's Day little package, and it is the most like 
adult Valentine's Day package because in there was a magazine of recipes for the air fryer. And you know what? That's going to be popping off. We're going to be popping off, making some sweet potato tater tots in these streets. So happy about that. Thanks, Mom, for yeah. knowing what we want. That's what's up. Yeah, my sister and uh, my brother-in-law got me the air fryer for Christmas and a recipe book. So we can be, uh, maybe we can combine recipes for a night. and Combine, have... you know, combine forces. Hell air yeah. forces. You know, because you can only cook so much in one air fryer, so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you gotta like change out. That's stuff what I always say. I'm like, damn, this would be cool if I had like another one. They make like the dual ones now too, which is kind of genius. Yeah. But anyways, uh, anything else? Anybody and then else? I wanted to shout out my friend Rose for the shirt that I'm wearing. So if you're watching on YouTube or when you see our little promotions, um, she made me that she made this really cool shirt. She makes a lot of clothing for herself, and she sold a bunch of stuff from her closet. <laughs> Um, and I got this shirt and That's it's dope. cute. I actually was saying to you before the show that, um, well, not only because we're both wearing white again, like we're, we're both wearing white, we're in our boy <laughs> band phase again. Um, but all boy bands make a comeback if they're good enough. Um, hey. hi, 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 hi. <laughs> Except we don't have to come back cause we never left, Ooh, you know, back <laughs> again for the first time. Uh, so V, I love that inside out look. Um, I was actually wearing a sweater inside out the other day, and this girl was like, "You did you mean to put? You know how I do that, right?" Yeah. And so I was like, "Ha! I do it because I want to confuse people. I like I like when people are like, wait a second, like you're too put together to not have realized that my I put my shirt on inside out. Like, are you serious? You don't think I looked in the mirror before, like I walked out of here? I don't know, but I think that that show uh, that shirt is dope. Um, all right, Thanks. well, I wanted to give a, a shout out to a, a couple of birthdays, um, all in the same family, all my family. Um, last week was my cousin Erica's birthday, and um, the crazy thing about it is that like her birthday is on like the fifth of February, and then her brother. Uh, his birthday is five days later on the 10th of February. But oh, then, wow. So uh, happy birthday to Edwin. It's his birthday today. Uh, well, the day we're recording, Wednesday, the 10th. And then um, and then, <laughs> uh, rest in peace to my uncle, uh, who uh, who was also born on the same day as Edwin. Their both names are Edwin. So, oh, wow. Yeah, rest in peace to my uncle. I miss you, Tia. So, yeah, it's kind of like a big month for them, uh, you know, uh, it's also, I think, uh, Erica's uh, wedding anniversary, too, in the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, wow, that. yeah, really a big month for them. Yeah, you know. Big you week, gotta, I guess. It's, it's <laughs> nice to stack it up. February is a good month, you know, so. Um, all right, well, uh, anything in breaking news, like, that you're seeing coming across the interwebs last second before we get out of here? Just to, I'm trying to I'm trying to look at Twitter. Well, I got some Let's, things um, yeah, before, what do you while got? you're looking. Uh, these are just some quick hit headlines I'm seeing. Uh, my sister actually sent me this one earlier, but this one uh, is Robin Hood sued after college student believed he owed over 700K on robin oh, Hood. Wow. um like apparently he, he ended up um unfortunately uh you know uh, committing suicide i guess and and, Jeez. and just because of you know of that so it's as interesting yeah. to see this is kind of like a lot of the repercussions that are going to happen with like now that like you know trading we've been talking about like all this stuff like is in this in the limelight now i'm also seeing that jay-z assisted robin thick with finalizing track list for a new album so that's pretty incredible um what else we got it uh, looks like right now what's trending is taylor is coming so it looks like uh it looks like something with taylor swift with uh she's gonna be on uh, good morning america she's going to be doing some sort of surprise announcement so it might be stuff with her re-releases of her older music um and stuff like that so i wonder I, I don't know like taylor swift's like steam i feel like has kind of gone out a little bit i don't know yeah you feel that i don't know you feel that her stands her stands are still going crazy but I, yeah i don't know this is the first. I knew that people were like waiting to see her re-release some of her stuff, uh, like her old stuff. Now that she's like getting the rights back to her her old music and stuff, so I'll be interested to see. Yeah, Taylor's coming. Long live Enchanted. People are 
people are going crazy. Um, that's the main stuff I'm seeing. Um, I'm also seeing Larry Flint, the founder of Hustler Magazine, dead at 78 of heart failure. I mean, oh, yeah. there's like a movie kind of- on Larry Flint and stuff. Like, I think essentially, yeah, I, just the way uh, he went against, you know, uh, uh, the uh, uh, people were trying to sue him and stuff back in the day for his magazine, I believe, and he kind of just uh, went against the courts and stuff, and 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 paved a way for magazines like you know other magazines to be able to put nudity, I guess, in it. Um, I don't know much about this guy, but you know, uh, yeah, yeah, he helped with that, yeah, along with like because he was like the same era along with Playboy and stuff, so definitely. Well, that's all, all we got. Just some stuff for y'all to talk about at the water. And yeah, so we'll have oh, to see if actually, anything develops there was another with the thing, Taylor the, Swift stuff. The, the Morgan Wallen stuff, do you, like, you know, uh, his album sales yeah. actually surged after, like, using the N-word. Disgusting. Yeah. I have no tolerance for that. And all these people out in these streets being, like, commenting stuff, saying shit, being all like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's no big deal. Like, I'm still going to support him. I have no love. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't think this that type of stuff can actually save him. Like, it, you know, the people that are supporting him right now are not the type of people you want supporting you. It's like, you know, Trump, I guess, like, like did it for it to be president. It's like the Proud Boys. It's the Proud yeah. Boys of fucking Morgan Wallen. But apparently uh, Jason Isbell, he's a, a writer on, on, on the song Cover Me Up by Morgan Wallen. Uh, decided to know everything that he's made so far from this album to the Nashville chapter of the NAACP. So um, thanks for helping out for a good cause. Like, so he's indirectly reparations. Yeah, that's fine. That's what's up. So that's some news there. Um, V Valentine's day coming up. Anything, anything special or is just another valentine's day for i hate bachelor. valentine's day i've never liked valentine's day we didn't day. make it I've a only... big deal on this episode like we typically would i feel like i always have used valentine's day as like a time to show my love and appreciation for my friends and stuff i've been in relationships on valentine's day and still not really done a lot for it um it just like really i mean it's a capitalistic holiday and it's just bullshit so uh it's whatever. I like an excuse to wear red and pink. My nails are my nails are hearts right now. Little hearts with black middle fingers because I felt like that best represented it's my kinda, feelings. That's kind of swaggy. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I feel you. I think like, you know, if you are going to celebrate Valentine's Day, I think the sweetest sentiment is always just like the simplest you know acknowledgement of just like like showing that you give a shit about somebody else is really it like if you're expecting like to have to go out to dinner or like some jewelry or some something no like come on like i feel like if you're in a relationship with somebody the most you i think you should at least expect more than a happy valentine's day text that's all i'm saying i was listening to a different podcast that they were like they were like doing a hypothetical situation. I've been like been dating for a year, recently went like long distance and they all they did for Valentine's Day was text me happy Valentine's Day. Like I wouldn't be OK with that. So you're but. saying like, you know, hypothetically, and this is me asking for like a friend hypothetically. But like, if yeah, yeah, for a friend, if you've been like talking to someone for like a little while or whatever, you would you would not text them anything on that day. I would send them something. I would text them something, but like I think it depends. Uh, the the time frames vary. Like I think you should acknowledge it if it's like somebody that you've been seeing for a decent amount of time. But I don't think it needs to be a whole hoopla. You know, if it's not like if it's like that's like in this situation, the hypothetical situation I brought up a year of dating and all you get is a text message. That's bullshit. Like you should at least be getting a phone call or a fucking like letter and some flowers sent. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's very easy to do very minimal things like flowers is very minimal. A nice card. Very minimal. Doesn't cost a lot of money. Shows a lot of care. I feel like cards like, are way at. more um, bigger deal than a, like flowers. Well, yeah, cards. Like if you have like something nice to say, I mean, yeah, car I cards on Valentine's Day. Huh? What the hell do you say on a card on Valentine's Day? 
Well, you know, like, it, I mean, you would have to be, I guess, at that stage where you're comfortable enough communicating your feelings to somebody, but. In writing? Huh. Yeah, I'm good at that. I'm a, I'm a queen of a card, so. Okay. Well, I'll be expecting one here in the next couple of days, I guess. God damn. Okay. <laughs> um, well, yeah. And then I guess you'll gonna... get your fucking pizza if that's what you want. Oh, so. <laughs> man. You're going to bring that up. You were so salty about that before. Um, anyways, we won't bring that up now for a later date, no. but we, we have a Valentine's day party. We'll be attending together. Apparently. Yes. We will be attending a, a, not together. Don't say it like that. No, not like that. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? What the hell? Ew. No. Um, <laughs> We're both like, eh. <laughs> that should be the name of this episode. Ew. Um, but yeah, no, Ew. uh, not together, but we like every other thing. Like, why does it have to be Valentine's Day party? No, no, Last no, week no, I no. said we're going to a Super Bowl party. You didn't make it be like, don't say it like that. Just because it's Valentine's no, Day, no. now you're gonna make it weird. Valentine's Day. Whatever. I hate you. All right, guys. Um, I love how we ended the Valentine's Day episode with like, oh my god, I hate you. All right, uh, guys. I hope you have someone that you actually do love. But we love you, so you don't have to worry about that. Someone does love you. You don't have to worry about that. You're surrounded by love in any sort of way Surround, that you sounded feel. by and love. And you know what? Search inside yourself for love first before you look at for, for it in someone else. That's all I got to say. There you go, folks. This has been Future Bachelor 150. Is this episode 151? Yeah. Gosh dang. I was asking you last week, does anyone out here remember drinking 151 when you were back in high school or like early days of college? Crazy. I didn't. Bacardi 151 no. proof. No. Anyways, I guys, drink, what do you I drink? Know. I drink brunettes and shit. I don't know. Yeah, this I know. episode's I hate definitely it. gonna be called the. All right, well, guys, we love you. Happy Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. This is been future XOXO Bachelor. Gossip Girl. My name is Sai. I'm Veronica. And you know what it is? We love you, deuces. Bye. <laughs> Podcast. Take that, rewind it back. Some money got the beat to make it easy. Oh, 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 oh.